Hey neighbor, welcome back. It's me, John from Beyond AR TV. Remember me? I used to make reactions like this a little bit more frequently, but after this year, I had to slow down a bit. I just kind of lost my heart for it, but you guys have been sending me the Rolling Stone Top 50 Songs of the Year, along with the Pitchfork list that I might still react to. You wanted my input, my takeaway. You guys are saying, oh, it's gonna be horrible. It's their worst one yet. Uh, maybe. I mean, God forbid I try and be an optimist. I'm trying to keep an open mind going in, but we'll see exactly exactly what they have on their top 50 countdown. I'll admit I already opened up the top of the article and I'm seeing the headlines here where it says disco revival, K-pop kings and queens, new hip hop rock stars and country wisdom. That makes me cringe a little bit, but then again, you gotta have a bubbly headline to get people to click, right? So let's just see what they have. If you wanna see the full list for yourself, it's linked in the description down below. These are just gonna be my reactions, my opinions. If you enjoy the video, like it, and let's get going. What a weird graphic this year. I mean, is that Harry Styles and his boxers, and then Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, these images that they chose, like even of The weekend. I know that's the whole aesthetic with After Hours and everything, but the way they did this and then Miley's just standing in the background like it's the Met Gala. Let's just go ahead and keep going to the actual list. Number 50 is Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Wow, they would put this on here, of course. It's Rolling Stone. Any chance to jump at an older song, right? It seems like they're in this place where it's like, Hey, we love the old stuff and we want to talk about, I don't know, The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Fleetwood Mac, but we also want to be up on BTS and everything that's new and hip that the kids care about. And of course, this going viral on TikTok, which I'll admit it was very pure. Moving on at number 49, Caroline Rose, Fuel the Way I Want. I've only heard this song a couple of times, but I thought it was actually really solid. I need to go back to this because I was a fan of a record that I think came out in 2018, 2019 that had her and like the track outfit on it. 48, Sam Hunt on a best list. I will never get over this. I've been hearing critics raving about Sam Hunt. Not in my circle of critics, of course, but the mainstream ones are going crazy. And I'm just like, how? How do you like this backwards ass stealing from every other genre, not having any personality type of country crooner? 47, I have no idea what this is. Jarv is, I guess that's a play on Jarvis. I hate that name. I went to school with this asshole kid. He was a grade below me. His name, well, I won't say it, but his last name was Jarvis. And oh my god, that dude was always wearing tap out tanks and talking about wrestling, and I fucking hated him. Charlie XCX Claws, this nearly made my own best list. It was right around number 50, but I had to push it back a couple of slots. I just didn't quite have room for it. I love this track. It's very weird, wonky, experimental, futuristic, but I love the fact that it's all about love and it's just it's sexual but it's also smart about it and the way that she describes that one line what is it slip and slide up my thighs like clementines it kind of actually feels genius you know what i'm retracting the genius it's a good line i don't want to put too much on it but it's a good lyric Doja Cat's Say So with Nicki Minaj is down at 43. Why not just the original version? Apparently, Rolling Stone is pissing themselves for the remix that no one needed or asked for. Pretenders You Can't Hurt a Fool at number 40 definitely feels like another very Rolling Stone type of move. At 39, we've got a track that I've never heard of at all. And at 38, we actually have If You're Too Shy, Let Me Know by the 1975. I think it's really funny that so many publications and music selected this song for like their praise or they centered in on it, but they supposedly love the whole album, Notes on a Conditional Form, yet everyone is picking this song, which is the most 1975 of yesteryear sounding track. I mean, I picked it too. I get it. It's the best song on the album by a landslide, but I think it's a little bit hypocritical that all of these publications are like, oh yeah, it's so cool, so futuristic, but we're going to pick this song that sounds like old 1975. I'm just happy to see some inclusion for that great track. At number 37, we've got Seven Summers by Morgan Wallen? Or is it Whalen? I don't know. Morgan Whalen? That sounds... No, that can't be right. Morgan Wallen! We're gonna go with that. Seven Summers. I actually like this track. There was a lot of buzz. I saw that it debuted in the top 10 of the Hot 100. I pressed play, and this thing is breezy and smooth as fuck. I love it. It's almost not totally country, maybe neo-country with a bit of a western flair, but also very poppy. It's just a sweet tune. I like it. This list isn't so awful so far. What are you guys talking about out there, okay? Or is it gonna get a lot worse. Should I be should I be strapping myself in for this last part? Roddy Rich's The Box comes after a few cuts that I was not familiar with and this was indeed on my best hits list. 
Uh, it blocked Yummy by Justin Bieber from getting to number one. Ah, there's Mood. I knew this one would make the cut somewhere. This is another track that I liked a whole lot more than I ever thought I would. I'm not a TikTok user. This is a TikTok song, but it's also fun. The guitars that are layered on this thing, it feels old school in a way, but it also has a modern cadence in 24K Golden as well as And Dior. They're both really good on this track. They're just bouncing off of each other, having fun, flexing, but also keeping it a little bit emo rap. Not familiar with number 32 at all, but we do have 3AM by Halsey at 31. This is a great tune. It was between Finally Beautiful Stranger and 3AM for my best songs overall list. And I ended up going with Finally Beautiful Stranger, but 3AM is still fantastic. The Mad Lads actually did it at number 30. They put Rascal by RMR. That whole redoing, the retelling, the remashing of Bless the Broken Road by the country trio Rascal Flats. This song is hilarious. I just, I don't know. I couldn't get enough of it. I came back to it occasionally for a laugh. And to see it here, I mean, I can't really get mad, right? Pussy Fairy by Janae Aiko is definitely something that, uh, I don't know, maybe I just need to tuck myself back inside my turtle shell for. It was not good. It was not good at all. Drake's Laugh Now, Cry Later, I'll admit, that's one of the better singles that he put out, but most of his output was so abysmal, it wasn't hard to look better than those steaming piles of shit. This is not a terrible song, but it's also not worthy of being on a top 50 songs that define the year list. Well, I am just totally out of the loop because I don't know who this older looking man standing in the woods is, Caribou, you and I? Uh, is this like somebody I should know? Because he's probably like somebody well-respected and it's just going over my head. Maybe he's like a well-respected, I don't know, author or professor that decided to make music. Kind of like when the Pope put out an album. Apparently he's been making sweet electronic music for years, so that is definitely not my forte. My apologies, no disrespect intended. I, j I just haven't heard it. Good news by Mac Miller. Not even cracking the top 20. I thought it would be higher, but I'm glad it's at least on here. This is definitely a tearjerker. It's such a good album overall. I love the melody, the gentle bass on this track. Mac's performance is just incredible. He released his magnum opus Circles posthumously, and that sucks. I hate that he's no longer here because he was totally coming into his own as an artist, and good news, that's the proof that lives on past his own life. Rina Sawayama, yes, hitting the top 20. STFU, AKA, shut the fuck up. This is not my top track off of her album, Sawayama, but it's still fantastic, of course. I love the fact that it has those new metal-y guitars on there, and also her vocal poise is incredible. She's an insanely talented vocalist, and if she doesn't blow up in the States and the rest of the world too, then I don't know, I'm gonna start a change.org petition or some shit. Selena Gomez cut you off. I just, uh, oh, she's so boring. I, I don't, I don't care. Perfume Genius Describe. This was a project that I didn't get enough time to spend with. I should have. My buddy Spectrum Pulse is always talking them up. And I really liked some of the tracks from Set My Heart on Fire immediately. This is one of those. I just, again, this is another reminder. Go back. Put it on my agenda. Hey, Siri, set a reminder. Listen to Perfume Genius more. Phoebe Bridgers' Kyoto definitely is deserving of making this list. It was a great track on the album. Not the best. I mean, I would have gone with I Know The End easily or even Savior Complex. Graceland 2, Lady Gaga's Stupid Love, another interesting pick. I do think this is an absolute smash. It didn't really stick around like I thought it would, on the charts or even in my own playlist. I thought I loved it a lot at first, and I still do like a lot of the elements of this song. Very throwbacky, a bit of disco-dipped energy, but I prefer, I don't know, Rain On Me, Sign From Above with Elton John, 911. There were better songs on the album. This was a track that I think a lot of people thought I hated, but I'm just more indifferent on it. I warmed up to it a bit. It's not awful. I get that it was definitely overplayed and overexposed, but that doesn't make it awful. And plus, I think we all know, I mean, the baby, he's got a lot worse songs, and he loads those albums up just for the charts and to gain the streaming metrics, so, I mean, go digging on his album and you'll definitely find some stinkers. Ice Cream by Blackpink and Selena Gomez. I thought I was looking at the worst list for a second after a couple of the ones that I've seen, but this on the best list is fucking hysterical. Even their fans came to my comment section when I put this on the worst list and said, yeah, we agree with you, this is a bad song, and Rolling Stone, they think they're gonna get clout because they put this on 
on here? I mean, why don't you, if you're going to pick anything, pick one of their full-on other language songs? This is the one in English. This just shows that you're out of touch, just like the Grammys are. Oh, they got Selena Gomez on there. Let's put it on the best list so we can understand the lyrics. Hey, my lips are sealed, Rolling Stone. I don't cover K-pop. That's not my thing, but I have heard this song, and oh boy, not good. I don't know how you recovered from that embarrassment, but at number 12, you have the Savage remix. Oh my god, absolute trash. I think Megan Thee Stallion definitely has good flows. Savage is meant for TikTok and nothing more. The Beyonce remix, I mean, it was just shoehorned in there. It didn't even really fit the song at all. And of course, people are like, go off, sis, because it has Beyonce on it and it's Megan Thee Stallion and she definitely has talent, but this song... Side note, I heard Body after you guys telling me to listen to the song because it wasn't on my worst songs of 2020. And I truly wish you hadn't made me do that. You tempted me. You tempted John from ARTV. He caved and he kind of lost his sanity in the process. My God, what an awful song. Midnight Sky by Miley Cyrus is a redeemer. This is a fantastic track. A little bit of disco, a little bit of rock, a great bass groove on the tune. This is absolutely deserving. I can see why it would make everyone's best hits list and to see it up very high, it's more than I thought it would get. So we're gonna take the win after a lot of L's. Gaslighter by The Chicks at number 10. This was a solid single, but definitely nowhere near their best. I mean, it's something that I think a lot of people got very nostalgic for. They're finally back after like 20 years off between albums. And Gaslighter, it definitely had its moments, but I didn't think it was great. This track is good. I got some solid rotation out of it. I ended up unsaving the song from Spotify after a few months, and I just really haven't had the urgency to go back to it. Moving on up to number nine, it's Harry Styles' Adore You, because of course there was gonna be Harry on there. We saw him in his underwear on the cover. We knew, we love it. We love the song, I mean, not Harry. Well, I mean, you know, maybe both. Maybe, maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> number eight, Fiona Apple, ladies. Yes, this is absolutely great. Uh, personally, I don't think this was, I mean, I think it's a perfect score album. I'm just gonna preface with that. But Ladies was one of the tracks that got a little bit old with the ladies, late. I don't know. It was one of the weaker tunes for me. I don't know if anyone else is in agreement with that. I think for her, drum set, under the table, newspaper, the title track, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, or God forbid, Shamika, all better songs. Number seven, BTS Dynamite, of course. Pander, pander harder, Rolling Stone, do it, I dare you. BTS do not have a single songwriting credit here. This song was manufactured to pump out money to the Western markets, and guess what? It worked because they released 10 remixes of the fucking song, the holiday remix, the poolside remix, the Acoustic remix, the EDM remix, I can't even keep up with all of the damn remixes. Dua Lipa's Don't Start Now came out in 2019, and with Rolling Stone, they typically will put things on there that came out in the year that they came out. I understand that for my own list, it would be eligible, but I'm surprised to not see, I don't know, Levitating, the remix even with the baby, or Break My Heart. Don't Start Now, we'll take it. I mean, it definitely ruled the airwaves in the early months of the year, so I guess I see why I'm not gonna go plain because future nostalgia is everything. Top 5 hype, what do we have? It's August by Taylor Swift, a deep cut. Okay, a little bit of respect goes out there. August is fantastic, one of the best songs on Folklore. I absolutely love to see this. And number 4, it's Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Probably should have gone with number 1 on that. It was the song, the hit song of the year. It was number one on my personal list, but I appreciate that it's at least in the top five. Considering how long it hung in the top five, it literally set a record on the Hot 100 for Billboard. But oh wait, what's that? Rolling Stone has their own chart and it's irrelevant? Maybe they're mad about it. I don't know. Start a conspiracy theory. Number three, we have Christine and the Queen's People, I've Been Sad. This is a great song. Definitely one that's very, very fitting for 2020. And number two, we have... Bob Dylan with Key West. I uh, have never been a Bob Dylan fan, so I'm just gonna excuse myself on this one. Can I get a teacher's note, please? Sorry, that's probably gonna get me some hate in the comments, but it is what it is. And at number one, we <laughs> Ah, they actually did it. They actually did it. I thought this was a meme. This is the number one song of 2020, according to Rolling Stone. It's WAP by Cardi B. WAP, 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 that wet ass pussy. Grab the bucket and the mop because Rolling Stone are just trying to 
I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do with this. Let's see their actual description before we go on. In the darkest depths of COVID lockdown, I love that they're writing this like a suspense novel, by the way. At a moment in history when leaving your house could literally get you killed, Cardi B and Megan delivered the perfect instructions on how to beat the quarantine blues. Gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. Quick, jump out before you let it get inside of me. Oh, it's a bad list from Rolling Stone. Another bad list. What do you know? They're definitely no stranger to putting those out in the past, but I guess it's just the opinion of their staff, their writers. They're trying to make everyone happy by putting as many polarizing figures on the list as possible. I get the whole pandering for clicks thing to an extent, but then again, this is just all over the place. It's messier than ever. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. And also, since they redid this recently, my buddy Crash Thompson gave me his blessing because he already did this stream, but I want to do a stream where I react to the top 500 albums of all time on Rolling Stone. If you want to see it, let me know in the comments. Other than that, if you want to check out my reaction to their best songs or else albums of last year, then tap here or tap here for another recent video. All of my socials, including my Patreon, can be found linked in the description down below. I hope you're having a fantastic end to your year. Maybe 2021 will be better, and I'll be back soon for more on Beyond AR TV.